Hey there, so first off I'll say that it's getting towards sunset so if you I'm hoping the light's not too bad but it may be a bit iffy. Obviously I'm not doing makeup or anything like that so you don't need to see completely clearly, it's only me. Yeah, not interesting really so I think most people by now probably use these videos as a podcast as it is and I'd probably suggest that because then you can do other things while listening to me ramble. Um, the, ra the thing I'm rambling on today is mental illness and relationships. And when I say relationships, relationships <laughs> I don't just mean uh, partners as in like in love and you know, getting married or that sort of, obviously not every part. You know what I'm trying to say? That for the type, kind of relationship, that's not the only thing I'm talking about. I'm also talking about platonic relationships as well. About the, the friendships and the family and everything encompassing all of that because at least for me and I think from a lot of other people for a lot of other people as well one of the biggest mental illness affects your whole life of course it does but if I had to pick it apart bit by bit the thing it affects the most at least for me is relationships as a whole um so yeah as I said in my mental illness story I was diagnosed at the age of 12 and that is just it's the time in your life where you are making friends and losing friends rapidly. You are trying to find yourself. You're not quite a child or a teenager. There's a lot going on at that time. And I had to add more. It's a really difficult time and it was made a lot worse. And as my woman problem started, especially when I left school, I lost friends rapidly friends that i had known for eight seven eight years i lost a drop of a hat um because no one at the age of 12 knows how to deal with mental illness i didn't know how to deal with it how was my friend meant to, how was my friends meant to i didn't really know how to react to not having any friends. Uh, I spoke about before I was quite a popular person in primary school and not having any friends was partly what led to my mental illness in the first place so then losing the friends I did have made them times worse. I was very lonely for a very long time and it was only around the age of 13, 14 that I made a small friendship group in where I live and we were friends for a very long time and my best friend throughout my teenage years come from that group and there were certainly issues and I look back and think we weren't as perfect as we thought and all of that but at the same time we were friends and we were there for each other even if we weren't always <laughs> we weren't always thinking it through let's say um, it was still a very good time and sort of come the age of 15, 16 I am got in contact with a couple of people from the school that I had since left through my best friend at the time and I was friends with them for a while and I had another friendship group so I certainly as a teenager I didn't have the same amount of friends as a or the same degree of friends if you like as a child but I got there in the end and even though I have definitely a number of times gone through the experience of having no friends and I mean literally no friends I was lucky with what I had at the time and some of them I'm still in contact with uh, I wouldn't call most of them my friends anymore but I'm definitely still in some of them are but I'm still in contact with some of them and 
I remember it and they're nice memories to have. I am very grateful that I have any memories, happy memories from my teenage years at all and I was so socially awkward and so messed up at that time. I'm very grateful for what I had. Sort of the ages of between 17 to 20 or 17 and a half to 20 um, I was working and when you work you you have workmates uh, at least for me that was how it worked I had workmates I didn't have anyone who I particularly massively bonded with but I had a lot of friends in a work sense and that was fine by me um, that was, I was getting a lot of social interaction, that was fine, that was as much as I was, I was happy, I was happy in that situation. When I was signed off, social interaction became a lot less. I volunteered at first, as I've spoken about before, and so I had social interaction then but it was limited and when I was permanently signed off interaction carried on falling um, now up until I'm not sure when really if I'm honest but I did hit a point where I had no friends and it was only when I really threw myself into blogging at the time that I made some internet friends and some of the friends that I made through blogging I'm still friends with um, but it was only once I did that did I find friends and for a very long time up until this year I was very limited on the friends that I had I had a couple I basically had, they were all Facebook friends, you know the kind I mean? You have them on Facebook and if they get engaged, married, have a baby, you say congratulations! Uh, on their birthday you say happy birthday and you might message them or talk to them maybe once a year but generally they're a status on Facebook and that was how a lot of people I knew were for a very long time so my interaction was very limited and then this year as I've spoken about before I have made a lot of friends due to beauty groups on Facebook and now YouTube as well and about six months ago thanks to gaming I've made friends that I would never replace in a million years and friends that I consider my friendship family and I know that they do too thankfully oh, I'd feel a while strange saying that I certainly have never had a friendship group like it and that's quite sad in a way that I've never felt supported with friends I was always the supporter and that's still true, I um, I think I naturally lean towards an agony aunt, which I'm fine with, I enjoy that. But I was never given the same sort of support back, and I am now. So, yeah. I'd say mentorness and friendship for me, it's left me very alone a number of times and you can feel even now with a number of friends I still feel very, I still feel very alone at times I can be extremely paranoid and just believe that no one likes me and they're all doing it out of pity I can worry a lot about the future will these friends friends still be in my life in a year in two years three years 
I definitely would say that it puts a strain on it because you are so paranoid all the time that something's going to go wrong that you end up almost making things go wrong without meaning to it's definitely a very difficult situation to be in family wise for me I'm very lucky with the family that I have they're all very supportive generally um, my mum is my biggest support I've said that before she really is and to be honest all that matters all that that's all that matters is my immediate family. I've not, I've not had any bad reactions off of any family. I've had no disownerships or anything like that. But the crazy stories you hear because I'm into illness. Um, issues, certainly issues here and there, but nothing horrible. Relationships as in the love sense and in the in, when I say obviously I know you love your family you love your friends being in love with someone that's probably the relationship group if you like that it's affected me the most because sat here at the age of 24 I've never been in a relationship I because I, I miss school missed the chunk of school from 12 to 16 I didn't do the boyfriend girlfriend thing and you know the break up after a week type thing everyone and their mother did and I didn't do that and then I missed college so I missed all of that sort of thing I missed uni I the job I did was in childcare and as a straight woman I'm not likely to meet anyone in that job you do come across straight men in it occasionally really occasionally um, you don't find men at all in childcare it's sad really but it's true you you don't it's not a common situation and then of course being signed off oh I'm not gonna meet anyone am I uh, I have done dating sites for a very long time now uh, about five years I'm off I've used dating sites I made a number of friends and I'm very grateful that I made them, but again, they're a bit, you know, Facebook friend type thing. Way back when it first started, I did, when I first started using them, so I was 19, I did go on a total of four dates with two different men, so two dates per guy. And yeah, they both called it off, sort of thing, it was both there choice um, and after that I've spoken to men for a very long time at times for y y oh, well over a year at times and either we haven't been in the right, right situation or something else has happened uh, they've had someone from their past turn up or y you get what I mean that something happens and things don't happen the way we wanted it's definitely where it affects me the most I love love in all its forms I love seeing love and I love hearing love and I don't mean it in the way that some people are going to think I'm saying I love hearing the giggle of a child because their mum who loves them is making them laugh. You can hear love in that and I love 
seeing an elderly couple hold hands. You can see the love in that. I love seeing a group of friends try and take selfies and fall about laughing. You can see the love in there. I love hearing and seeing new relationships grow and I love I love love. I love it and I have love in the form of family. I now have love in the form of friends. And there's one I'm missing. <laughs> um, don't get me wrong. I'm well aware that it's just not my time yet. It's not my path that I will be going down just yet. And I will in the future. But like anyone I get the moments of loneliness where I wish and hope that one day I will have someone it may not happen and I that's something I'm, I'm trying to come to terms with I might not meet anyone Maybe my path is not to meet someone. That's my path. There isn't someone at the end of my path. And if that's the case, then that's okay. I'm learning to come to terms with it and see that as okay. Dating wise, I haven't had a bad reaction to my mental illness on dating sites really. You think it, you think what you come across. On dating sites sometimes you, you would but I haven't. I have had bad reactions to the situations that it's put me in having to call something off or someone liking me and I'm having to say I'm sorry I can never meet you it's not going to happen not easy it's really not easy because I don't want to have to do that to someone but it's often the only choice I have I can either string them along and say that to them maybe years down the line or I can be front, up front with them and say you know I'm only looking for friends at the minute I'm not in the position to meet anyone I can't do that right now and most people are pretty good about it some people are not and that's just something you have to learn and live with I definitely haven't had a horrible experience yet. I do wait for it sometimes. I'm not sure what else to say. I think my advice to anyone with mental illness is that relationships are really tough whether they be friendship, friends or more friendship, family or more even but the ones worth it the ones who deserve you in their life however cl cliche it may sound they will stay they won't go anywhere the ones that are worth your time your feelings your happiness they will stick around 
the ones who don't, the ones who walk off and call you names or get angry at you, they're not worth your time. If they can't see that what you're dealing with is an illness, they're not worth any more time than what you've already given. If you are someone who uh, is really struggling to find friends, I seriously recommend Facebook groups of whatever hobbies you're into, uh, chat forums, sort of same sort of thing. You will find friends. It happens naturally. Online games or gaming is also a very good way. Um, but obviously, you know, I run into gaming. You will find a way. It does happen. It does not always feel like it. If you're struggling with your family, move yourself away from them as soon as you can. Family should be supportive as much as they can be and if you just can't if they are not being supportive, if they are not supporting you or at least respecting you this goes to any kind of relationship get out, get out, get out, get out move yourself away as much as you can because respect is really important not, not everyone's going to understand mental illness, we get that can you respect it please? I don't really know what this was. This was a bit of a ramble, wasn't it? Again. I seem to end up on 22 minutes a lot with these. Anyway. I will... Nope. <laughs> anyway, uh, I hope this was informative for you. I feel like I just ramble a lot, but I hope it was. And until next time, just believe. Bye.